Hello kids, welcome back. Today we are going to start with a new content that's called the second conditional. So please pay attention. First, I'm gonna start with asking you some questions, okay? What would you do if? First, what would you do if you won the lottery? Here we have three people that are going to answer this question. First, the kid says, if I won the lottery, I would travel around the world. Then the woman says, if I won the lottery, I would start my own business. And finally, this man says, if I won the lottery, I would buy a big house. Okay, so as you can see, they all start saying the same thing. They say, if I won the lottery, I would. If I won the lottery, I would. If I won the lottery, I would. So, if they won the lottery, they would have a lot of money, right? What would they do with the money? Here the answer changes. He would travel she would start her own business, and he would buy a big house. But the condition is the same for all of them, if they want lottery. Let's see another one. If you had a time machine, where would you go? Once again, they are answering the question. They say, the kid says, if I had a time machine, I would visit the future. The woman says, if I had a time machine, I would go back to the 80s. If I had a time machine, I wouldn't use it. It's dangerous. So once again, they all start with the same sentence. If I had a time machine. If I had a time machine, if I had a time machine. He says that he would go to the future, she would go to the past, specifically to the 80s, and he wouldn't use it. Okay, so we have the would, the would, and here we have wouldn't because this is in the negative. Okay, this is would not use it. Okay, so how and when do we use the second conditional? When do we use it? We use the second conditional to talk about imaginary or improbable situations. So all of these situations that I gave you in the examples are imaginary or improbable or unlikely, okay? They are not happening right now. They are imagining that if something happened, they would do another thing, okay? So if we say, if I won the lottery, uh, that is an improbable or imaginary situation. It is unreal. Ok, entonces lo usamos para hablar sobre cosas imaginarias, poco probables o que no están ocurriendo en este momento. Por ejemplo, ganarse la lotería o eh, ser presidente, eh, tener una máquina del tiempo. Es como ponerse en una situación. Si yo me ganara la lotería, yo haría esto. Now, how do we use the second conditional? Okay, so, as you can see, there are two parts to every sentence. Cada oración de las que les mostré primero tenía dos partecitas. Y estas se van a llamar if clause and main clause. The if clause is the condition. And they start with if. 
if you rested more, you wouldn't feel tired. The if clause, entonces, la if clause es la condición. Es el, si yo descansara más, o si yo no tuviera exámenes, la condición para que otra cosa pase, y la otra cosa sería the main clause, ¿ok? La otra cosa sería la main clause, eh, yo no me sentiría cansado. O tú, no te sentirías cansado. Si tú descansaras más, no te sentirías cansado. Now, we can have this in different orders. So we can switch the if and the main clause. Let's see. In this case, we say, if you rested more, you wouldn't feel tired. And here, down here, we have, you wouldn't feel tired if you rested more. This is exactly the same, okay? You can switch the two of them. If you didn't have exams, what would you do? What would you do if you didn't have exams? Both of them are exactly the same. So you can say first the if clause or the main clause, however you like, yeah? La if clause y la main clause se pueden eh, cambiar de orden. Puede estar primero la if clause o la main clause y no va a cambiar el significado de la oración. Lo importante es que cada clause esté bien construida dentro de sí misma. So, let's see the order, okay, the structure. For the if clause, they start with if, okay? Then you have the subject, in this case is you, and then we have a verb in the past simple form. But this is not in the past simple, okay? Because it is the second conditional form. Entonces, tenemos el if, que sería el si, okay? Si yo descansara más, si tú no tuvieras exámenes. Si tú descansaras. Aquí el verbo lo usamos en la forma del pasado simple. Pero no está en el pasado simple. O sea, no estamos diciendo si tú descansaste más. No, estamos diciendo si tú descansaras más. Lo que pasa es que en el inglés no existe esto que tenemos en el español, que es el descansaras, si tú cantaras, si tú bailaras, si tú comieras. No tenemos esa forma en el, en el inglés, entonces le tomamos prestada la forma al pasado simple. ¿Ok? Pero siempre que ustedes vean como el if, esta, esta estructura con la if clause y la main clause va a ser una... Un condicional, se llama, second conditional. Entonces, estaríamos diciendo, si tú descansaras más, si tú, cualquier cosa, si tú jugaras más, ¿ok? Es una situación hipotética que no está pasando, eh, que no pasó tampoco en el tiempo pasado, sino que estamos imaginando que podría pasar. Si es que esto pasara, esta otra cosa, Pasaría. Ok. Let's go back to English. So, we have the if clause, if plus subject plus the verb in the past simple form. Now, what about the main clause? You have the subject, it's you again. You have the would. This is a modal verb, would. And another verb in the infinitive, okay? So, you wouldn't feel tired. Tú no te sentirías cansado. Here we have the NT because this is not. You would not feel tired. Está en negativo en esta ocasión, por eso tenemos esto. Pero simple sería así, would. Ok. Entonces, el would feel sería, te sentirías, bailaría, cantaría. Esa es la forma en el español. 
Okay. If you didn't have exams, what would you do? Si tú no tuvieras exámenes, ¿qué harías? Nuevamente, tuviera. No tuviste, tuviera. ¿Y qué harías? ¿Qué harías? Ok. And as I told you, you can switch and it's exactly the same. So, let's have a summary or a review. We have two classes, the if class and the main class. The if class is the condition and the main class is the result. So, we need the if class to happen first for uh, the result to occur. Recuerden, si yo me ganara la lotería, me compraría una casa. O sea, es necesario que yo me gane la lotería para que me compre la casa. Esta es la condición para que esta otra cosa suceda. ¿Está bien? The same thing here. If I were you, I wouldn't leave my house. Si yo fuera tú, no saldría de mi casa. En contexto cuarentena, ¿cierto? Pandemia. Entonces, esto sería como un, un consejo al final. Si yo fuera tú, yo no haría esto. Luego, if I met Shakira, I would say hello. La condición es que yo conozca a Shakira para que yo le pueda decir hola, ¿cierto? And you can switch. I could say, I would say hello if I met Shakira. It's exactly the same the other way around. I wouldn't leave my house if I were you. Okay? Now, resumen de la gramática. If I, the subject, okay? The verb in simple past, if I met Shakira, pero no es si yo conocí, no, es si yo conociera algo que estoy imaginando que podría pasar. I, the main clause, I, the subject, would or wouldn't, in negative, and the infinitive, say, leave. Okay, now let's practice. 